Welcome to this week's Ask GMBM. We've got lots of questions to get into, as always, uh, gratefully given by you guys in the comments down below the videos and on the email ask at gmbm.com. Big mountain bike questions. What I needed was a big mountain bike expert. Look what I found in the shed. Oh, who? What? You. Greg. Oh, me, yeah. You. Yeah. You're the mountain bike expert. <laughs> I do know a little bit about biking. You know a bit about riding. Yeah, don't you? a little bit. A little yes. bit, a little bit. So yep. I reckon between the two of us, we'll be able to answer these questions. And if not, we're going to throw them right back at you. You can help us out. Yeah. So let's get started with this week's questions. First one is from Andrea Manzoni. Um, he used to do BMX. Um, he's looking to get his first good mountain bike. Was thinking a dirt jump bike or a hardtail, you know, standard mountain bike. Oh, okay. Um, yep. So some bike suggestions. He was looking at the Canyon Stitch 360, right, or the Trek Caliper 7 as some uh, guidelines. Mm, yes, yeah. Now the Canyon Stitch 360. Haven't you ridden that? I have ridden it. Yeah. Yeah. Your son's got one. Has he? Yes. Is that what my son's got? That's what your son's got. Oh, that's got. a rad bike. Yes, yes, it is a good bike. But depending on exactly what you really want it for, it. Yeah. Is it a real mountain bike? See. He's going from BMX to mountain bike, so he wants to keep that yeah. trick orientated. The, the, the Canyon Stitch could be a good idea. That's a very good bike. I do yeah, like the Canyon yeah, Stitch. Yeah. The Trek is an equally good bike as well. Yeah, Trek Trek Carper does look cool. Yeah. Does so it's cool. just this one's personal hard, preference. right? It it's is personal, personal preference. preference because if we suggest one bike. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what that leaves us really. Yeah, but there's a number there's of too bikes many up good there. bikes. Exactly. Out there, exactly. Man. I think what you should do is if you've narrowed it down to two, you're doing quite well. Yeah. Have a good look and think, oh, where do I see myself? I, I've got to say, right, I actually had no idea what my own son had that bike. <laughs> yeah. He had, I, to me, it was like a blue one, yeah. right? So that blue one he's got, he loves it. He's getting on really well with it. And he's um, like six foot something. Yeah, and you, you, you used to I've ride ridden, too, so. I've got a Scott Voltage, that one's good. Scott Go on, Voltage, yeah. that's nice. That's real compact, it's very real short, tiny. very yeah. trick oriented bike. That's worth looking at too. Yeah. Right, I hope we've helped out there, Andrea. Let us know what you get in the comment section down below. It'd be really cool bike to know. Bike photo would be yeah. amazing bike for the bike shed. Photo, bike would be great. For the yeah, shed. Good luck on it, it's gonna be fun, I bet. Um, Caden Farnsworth says, hey guy, first off, love the, hey guys, first off, love the show. Thank you very um, much. He's buying a YT Jeff C 27 <laughs> CF. Hot bike. That's a beautiful um, bike. Uh, he wants to extend the fork travel from 150 to 160. Okay. Uh, he's going to put RockShox debonair air spring in the fork, Whoa. install ma map ramp control, and upgrade to 800 mil bars. Oh my goodness. Carbon bars. <gasps> he's saying it's going to be about $400 to upgrade all that stuff. Do is it. Is it worth it? Do it. A hundred percent. The best yeah. thing you can do about a bike is upgrading your suspension. Mm. If you can't afford a top end suspension fork, but then take a look what goes into that fork. You can upgrade yeah. your internals, which is definitely going to make that shock and that rear and that front fork feel yeah amazing. Yeah, an amazing carbon bike. bars as well, yeah. lowering the weight down. I think. I mean, Whoa. that's that's a great bike. Sometimes you have got to weigh up. You know, if you're mm. spending, if you've not spent much on the bike, yeah. and then you're looking at tons of upgrades, you've got to ask yourself: Is it really worth yeah. it? Um, I personally think if you really want that upgrade, then it's worth it. But, you know, if it's a budget thing, then you've got to be thinking, you know, should we do it or not? Exactly. But I think on a Jeffsy, you can make that, like, top end. It's going to be feeling yeah. very plush with yeah, yeah. nice suspension. So do it. you have such a good time. Yes. I think spending money on bikes is the best fun ever. I literally I... love doing it. I'm not allowed to do it very often. Yeah, get out of hand, you do. I've can, been yeah. told. I can. Get yeah, out of hand. Went out of hand. Like, Bye. <laughs> yeah, Bye. yeah. Just go on the oh, web. Terrible. Get terrible. That, get not, that, good. Get that. not good. Not um, good. Nicholas Allegra says, uh, I'm doing an EWS in France oh. in a month's time. Wow, oh, okay. What kind of training plan would you recommend? Ooh. With maybe not the perfect. You know, I've... Hang on, hang on, Blake. Let okay. me give you the rest of the story. Right. He has done a dozen enduros in California already. So he's got a bit wow, of experience. So he's got experience. Got experience. So he knows um, what he's dealing with. That was over the last couple of years, yeah. but he's never specifically trained for enduro. Okay. So Come on, okay. give, it, give some words of wisdom. Well, I did the uh, Mega Avalanche, and I yeah. felt like I could, I needed to be a little bit fitter for certain things because there's some mm. climbs in that that were super crazy and gnarly yeah. and hard, especially when you're descending so fast. I was like, I need more power on my legs. I need to be a bit more fitter. Yeah. I need to lose a little bit more weight. Felt a little bit heavy for this, this yeah. and that yeah. and this. So there's a lot to take into consideration. Diet, no, mm. my diet, I wasn't actually focusing on my diet that much for that <laughs> I had a beer or two potentially diet a lot so of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so there's a lot to take into consideration when racing but yeah neil is actually training mm. to take part in the EWS so take a look at this video it might give you a few insights to what 
you need to use and to do. Okay, so while Neil's getting changed, just going to talk about what he's going to actually do today. So today we're doing a VO2 max test. Um, simple way of looking at it, it's like we're going to ride an ever steepening climb till Neil actually gets to his maximum. And what we're measuring here is his aerobic capacity, so it's his ability to um, use oxygen as a fuel source and the work of his muscles. Okay, so it's the kind of blue ribbon event um, fitness test for him. Okay, how that ties in with his EWS. EWS, he's got his short shaft burst. He's going to be doing two days of racing, two days of practice before. In his racing, he's going to be doing really intense anaerobic downhill efforts. But out of the whole day, that's only six to eight small sections. Okay, Blake, finish your tea because we're going to keep going. Uh, next question is from Ollie Ferguson, um, very keen mountain biker, but unfortunately, due to work, only gets to ride um, every couple of months. Couple of months. It's not much, is it? Poor guy. Not very much at all. He's been deprived of um, the mountain bike. Yeah, mm. not good. I uh, really want to go tubeless, but been wondering the fact that my wheels spend long periods of time not spinning, would it affect the function of the sealant? You've got a bit of experience in this. Yes, I have, yeah. I have left a bike sat for a while. I've left a set of wheels sat for a while. Yeah. The actual compound inside it, so the jelly and all that lube and you know the stuff inside yeah, yeah. does congeal. It does mm. start to stick and you don't have any liquid in there, it just yeah. turns to muck. Um, yeah, the best thing is to just fill it up again. Right. So you might find that you lose pressure because it unseats itself or dries up and unseats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got to fill it up again. Maybe you don't have to restart, but you yeah. just fill it up again. Oh, okay. But yeah, it does does affect it over time. It does affect it, not the end of the world. It's not the end yeah. of the world, no. Other thing I'd say, every now and then, go in the old garage, give the bike a look and yeah. give the wheels a spin. Yep. Bzzz, listen to that old rear hub, enjoy it. While you can. While you can. In the yeah. moments that you <laughs> yeah. have. Or take yeah. it to work, depending on where it works. Yeah. yeah. I think good. But yeah, not the end of the world. Um, Keaton A Riding says, um, my fork recently blew up. Oh. It's a 2012 66 RCV mm. with 180 mil of travel. Uh, bike it's on is a 2012 Intense Uzi. Okay, good uh, bike. That's um, a good bike. And I was wondering if it was a good idea to put a dual crown fork with 200 mil of travel on it. Well, wow, going from Whoa. 180 and you're putting 20 mil more on there? We've all discussed this secretly yeah. behind the camera. Jackson, no. Jackson, Jack no says no. Blake, you, I think you were a no. Yeah, I'm... I'm I think it. you could do it. Yeah. I think you could get away with it. But the thing is, if you put a really good um, single crown fork on, you've got mm. a really... You've got still got a great all-rounder. Yeah, exactly. So I think you could it's, do it. if you Feels really, a bit lighter. Yeah. It looks lighter. But you've gone... You've committed downhill once you go to... I think once you go to triple clamp, you've committed to downhill. Yeah. You've gone big. You ain't gonna. What you ain't gonna want to do that much more than they don't go up hills very well. They don't. You sat. You can't get exactly. Over the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> can't get over the front of this. Thing. Um, and plus, yeah. you're gonna be spending money on a triple crown fork, which potentially yes, a lot money. Little bit more money than your yeah. single crown. So because yeah. you've got one more crown. Oh I mean, that must be it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say if you're committed to downhill, then worth a thought. Um, I will say I did put a triple clamp fork on a trials bike once. Wow. It was the stupidest bike I've ever seen in my life. There you go. It was unbelievable. There you go. So don't do that. <laughs> okay, next one is from Samuel Pruitt. I'm looking to uh, for uh, some good flat handlebars for my bike. Okay. What do you recommend? I'd like to stay under $100. I mostly ride trail and enduro right rock i'm not going to recommend any single bars no um i don't think you should either no. but i did have literally in the last moments had a quick look on um uh, a big website where they sell things for bikes and there's loads of good bars there's under that, well, look at that so i'm nice just going to say well. rentful fat bar use that that's mm -hmm. really good um, they're a really good bar there's a uh, race face atlas really great bar um, there's a lot out there, $100, oh, the rentals. budget is good, you could definitely bar. go over that, um, but uh, the bars under that money that's sort of, uh, I'd say, yeah, 62, 65 pounds, pretty good, so you're on Which point. Which is around $100. Go with that budget, you're getting a good set of bars, I think. Um, if you go below that budget, if you start spending a bit less, you're struggling. Mm. Yeah, so I'd, my advice is spend all the budget yeah. on them bars, and I think you'll get the right set. Mm -hmm. um, don't go cheap on handlebars. Oh, no, don't. Band idea. Um, and we're talking about handlebars, Blake. Yep. Um, you did a very funny video. Right. Um, how to stop going over the bars. Oh, yes, I remember. We've all been there. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. OTV, out the front door, over the bars. I'm sure we've all done it and occasionally still do, but this is how to try and avoid it. <laughs> 
the front brake. I think that's a mistake that almost all of us made as a novice is to rely on that front brake too much. And a big handful of that on a grippy surface is gonna give you a big surprise. But even when it gets slippery, if your weight's a little bit too far forward and you use that too much, you can get going over the bars. Oh, not again. <laughs> it's a good video there, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, I like it a lot, I yeah. like it a lot. Um, Samuel's not finished with his questions though. What? No. No, no he's not. He says he's got All some- All questions. Um, it's a lot of questions. Not many people get to ask two questions. No. Um, no. But I like Samuel. Uh, he's got some scratches on his bike. He's got no idea how they got there. Go ahead. Is the, that normal? That's the scratch fairy in the normal, shed. Is that normal, Blake? Yes, it is. Yep. Because it happens. It does. The way you ride your bike. Like, I've got one. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm out riding my bike out in the woods, I like to lift my dropper post to the top and I sit on my down tube, on my top tube. Oh, and all the mud on yeah. that, and I'm like sitting you there, like, like why there. is there scratch? And I'm yeah. like, ah, it's my dirty bum. Yeah, rubbing yeah. on my. Yeah, top Jack tube. was saying it's his knee pads because he's got he knock rubs, knees. Yes, he's yeah. got knock knees. Now he hit the top tube all the time, <laughs> um, and he's got little, he's got little scratches on the top of his yeah. top tube on the by seat post. That's really, really depressing. Um, I remember I marked one of the bikes I really liked once just by leaning it in the same place every day uh. in the garage. You got to think about these things. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's usually something you're doing regularly. Yeah, but and it's a good thing. You haven't thought about it yet, but it is a good thing. It's a good thing. It means you're getting out on your bike. Exactly. And what's the old saying? You can't make an omelette without breaking some eggs. Oh, no, you know? that. So if you want a nice mountain bikey omelette. Didn't think about that one. You're going to get some scratches. Wow. That's what it is. Right, Jacob Darius says, I recently bought a 24-7 slacker, the old model with a steel frame. Uh, I'm not very good at jumps and I have been practicing my local skate, skate park. Do you have any tips on how to clear jumps on a heavier bike? Just do oh, it. It's the same excuses, thing. excuses. Exactly. Just You're keep making doing excuses. It. Just and keep I won't doing have it. it. I won't have it. There's, that bike can jump. If I put this dude on it, he'd clear that jump. Wouldn't you? Yes. You know what? The heavier the bike in the air, the more stable it is. The more stable it is. Yeah. So yeah. that fills you with confidence. Yeah. So look at what you're doing with the actual technique. That's what I'd say. Um, it isn't the bike. The mm. bike can do it. I've seen so many people do things on bikes that I thought it's not possible on wow. the bike. Then the, a rider does it and you're like, yeah. oh, oh, I need to improve. Yeah, so, you know, just look at your technique. Think how you're doing it. Do you need more speed? Do you need to attack the takeoff in a different way? Uh, watch some of the videos. There's tons of videos on GMB. Yeah, about how so to jump. many videos, yeah. So have a look at that. Right, okay, next one. Um, Anugraha Rokaya says, would you recommend a hardtail mountain bike for the daily commute? A hundred percent yes. Uh, but he's thinking he could buy a road bike. He could buy a road bike Why? instead, but he does like Why? mountain biking. Why would, would you I, get a road I guess bike? What, I guess what uh, Anugraha's asking right. is, is, if he gets a mountain bike, can he commute on it as well as play on it on the weekends, which you'd like to start doing? Definitely can. There you go, you see. Yes. Definitely can. Where does he live? Um, he lives in um, on Earth. He's on Earth in, okay. um, let me just check quick, in Oklahoma. Oh, it's quite In Oklahoma, he said it's flat. very flat, yeah. actually. Yeah, smooth yeah. roads, no trails whatsoever. Okay. So it sounds like the only way to have fun on mountain bikes is to really use it day to day. Yeah, so full suspension, um, you know, it's going to be hard work. And flat like, there's no such thing as no trails whatsoever. Mm. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. I've been to Kent in the UK. There's oh. even things to do on bikes there. And Kent is, <laughs> well, quite boring. The Queen lives there. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's how boring it is. <laughs> um, in Oklahoma, I'm sure there's stuff to ride. Me and Blake went out the other day and played on a curb for hours. Yeah, you've got some endless street out there. <laughs> we played on that curb yeah. for a long time. Um, so there's definitely trails there. Get that mountain bike. You know, you can, when you've got a road bike, it's very unlikely you'll do much else with it. Because you're stuck to the streets. Can't venture yeah. off-road on a road bike. Yeah, don't get lost on it. Okay, uh, Lucky McFeet says, would it be worth buying a good hardtail and a size small frame, right. uh, convert it to single speed, Okay. Yeah. instead of buying a dirt jump bike? Why? <laughs> so the thing is, you want to ride dirt jump bikes, but you're going to buy... It's going to cost you the same, so why go through the hassle? Just get a bike that's dedicated to that sport. It got a thumbs up from Jack, that answer. Yeah. And it gets it from me too. Keep it simple. Go get the hardtail stronger jump bike. Yes, yeah, stronger too, yeah. Um, he's thinking, the bike he's thinking of as well is a Scott Voltage. Oh, no brainer. Don't miss out on that because he's riding one. I've got one and it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, we've definitely pointed you in the right direction there, but that's a few questions about hardtails, mm, which yes, I like. I love really. hardtails. Um, so let's take a look at this video. I think, you did you do this? How hard can you push a hardtail? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, great video, let's have a look. It's good. Well, full cross is one discipline I haven't done 
for ages is all about power and getting that power down. Hang on. Right, I got my breath back. I'm talking about getting your power down to that rear wheel to get the speed because you need a lot of speed, especially for those big jumps like that triple there and that double and that one double down there into that turn. You need to get as much power down to that rear wheel as possible. But when you're having a full suspension, like if I was to ride my Scott Genius on this track, I'm going to have to be locking out that rear suspension to get as much power down as possible to clear those jumps. I've actually got 35 PS on this. I've lifted it a little bit, but I don't want that tire to deform in the turns because I want to get as much speed as possible to clear these jumps. Okay, time for the quick fire yeah, round. My favorite this bit. bit can be exhausting for <laughs> yeah. everyone involved. Can't it? Right. Yeah, you ready, I've mate? been working out for this, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, right. <laughs> Paul Choynier says, where the heck is the Don? He's in San Francisco. He's in San Francisco having a nice time. Yeah. It's annoying. lucky man. Annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Really annoying. Um, Andre de Regal says, could we have a fakey tut tutorial done by Blake? Yes. Uh, Randy Hill says, um, the beard makes you look like an old man winter. Don't grow it back. Who's I think you look all right with it. It's all right. Oh, stubbly. Yeah. yeah. Him alone. Is, yeah. Um, the Chaos Engine asked GMBN, should I sell my road bike? Yes. Yeah, probably. Um, oh, <laughs> Just leave it at that. Travis Ramos says, uh, manual to front flip would be epic and doable. We talked about it last week. Oh my god. It's been done, me. apparently. Yeah. It's been done. No. Uh, it's been done. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. No, I'm no, no, but not for Blake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bob Wilderman says, uh, quick fire, what is your favourite beer style? Ale, IPA, stout, or lager? Ale. Good answer. Mike F, if your new chain comes with a snap pin, use it and carry the quick link for emergency. Remember last week yes. we were talking about which Clever. Way to go? That's a good idea. Jack, he, says, Jack no. says no. What? Um, Elliot Flowers, bring back Sumo Sam on an aero bike. I don't think that makes any sense. Cause he... I've got an aero bike. Oh, God. Not another, uh, not and I know Sumo over. Sam. I'm oh, not another sumo video. Quick fire. Tobias Erickson says, guys, um, he wrote, oh, this is hilarious. I've got to slow us down a little bit here. Oh, really? Last week, we talked about this guy, whether he should spend £600 yeah. on a road bike no. or a mountain bike yes. of a certain kind. Yeah. <laughs> he said a rad bike. <laughs> and we spent ages telling him he should buy road bikes. Oh, bike. my goodness. A me. rad bike. Man, we we are dumb. Sometimes. Let's get on to correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, because we might be wrong or correct. We don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong with Jasper Johnson. Whoa, Ready? okay. Ready? Uh, Jasper Johnson, you're going to love this. JJ. 14 years old. He's been trying one footers at his local woods. <gasps> um, can you correct me if he's wrong? Um, okay. Here he goes. I mean, you're the man for this, Blake. Right. So what you've got to do, I think he's the second man into the jump. Okay. So, right. First man through. Oh, he's going for like pretty, the whip. Pretty he's going Nino for a whip. whip. Pretty yeah. Nino whip. Pretty. It was pretty, pretty Nino rather than it was pretty. <laughs> um, right, here we go. Here we go. Here comes Jasper. Taking off. Oh, oh. oh he's got it. It's there. Well, his foot's off. Foot's off. Hey, to the layman. To the layman. I'm hey, like, his correct. foot's off. Oh, right. It's correct. How does he improve? Well, no, I think that's it. You could just move your leg out way more. How to make it more it stylish? Look, it did look like he popped it, so if, I always thought he was going over the handlebars then. Yeah, but he held it all right. But that is... Read the jump pretty well. I mean, yeah. if you freeze frame it there... Yeah. Boom. Right at the top. There you go. It's foot Legs off. right out. Could he do something? How hard would it be for Jasper to start making that like a step through or something to like just give it a bit more style? Because I think yeah. that's the problem with a one footer. It ain't massively stylish, mm, is it? No. Like you've you done can a turn trick. the bars, turn the bars turn fast, into yeah. the into the foot you're taking off. So it kind of like turns into a Euro table. Oh, really. nice. So you nice. can just so it looks style like a real relaxed turn down bar. table. Yeah. yeah. You could do it the other way, so you kind of go into a You're very close table. to that, actually, Jasper. That's a good call. Yep. Just so if you're looking at your jump, if you just turned your bars now slightly down to the left, yeah. so your foot that's on is high, the mm. foot that's off is low. Mm hmm. That could look sick. It looks sick. It looks Slightly sick. turn into that jump, and everyone will be like, check that relaxed dude out. No, what else has he got? Forever. Like, 
Nothing else. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just don't Manual down the trail. Done. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much, Jesper. That was great. If you've got to correct me if I'm wrong and you would like to see it critiqued, um, some of us would. Yep. I don't like being critiqued myself. Mm. Um, but if you'd like to send it in, send it to uh, ask at gmbn.com and we will take a look. Um, give us your questions for next week's show in the comment section yeah, down below. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, you can send them also to that email mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for watching. Blake, could you throw these guys to a GMBN video? That is just going to keep them, keep them with us yes. and keep them enjoying mountain bikes. Yes. Eight beginner tricks. Oh, great video. There you go. go you can to. go. One of the, I think one of them is the one foot. Yes. So check that out. Check that out. Um, I'm going to throw you, we mentioned it in the show, to our Riding a Curb video, which we had oh, a yeah. lot of fun on. It's a good one. Nice sunny day. There's another one coming soon. Yes. Different. Yeah, click on that old globe there to subscribe. We're trying to get as many subscribers as we can because it just makes us feel good. <laughs> we feel great. Uh, and give us a thumbs up, like. Cheers, I mean, thanks. Can we See get more friends? Time. Yeah. Yeah, it means we've got loads of mates. Loads of friends. <laughs>